All right, good morning. My name is Bill Cash. I'm a physical activity consultant for the State Department of Health. Uh, thank you for having me here today. Um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, Fitness Gram for Oklahoma schools. So how many of you have heard of Fitness Gram before? Let's see hands. Okay, one, two. All right, I'm disappointed there's not more. Um, that's okay. That's what I'm here today for. I'm here to educate you a little bit about what Fitness Gram is. So if you didn't know, uh, Fitness Gram is a comprehensive educational reporting tool used to assess physical fitness and physical activity levels for children. It's the most widely used child health related fitness assessment in the world. And when I say that, it's used with about 22 million children across all 50 states and it's also used in 20 foreign countries. Um, so it's used a lot. Um, the Fitness Gram software also features a powerful data management software to help with data-driven decision making, which is great for your schools, it's great for your PE teachers to be able to make those data-driven decisions. Also, if you look at Senate Bill 1186, it clearly states school districts will provide physical activity reports to parents and guardians. This is also something that the Fitness Gram software provides. It provides reports for parents as well as teachers. So we'll go over that a little bit farther in our presentation today. So again, why Fitness Gram? Why use Fitness Gram rather than making our own stuff up, right? Well, Fitness Gram is based on something I would like to call the healthy fitness zone. Um, this is softer language to use. Um, so your child is either in a healthy fitness zone or not in a healthy fitness zone. These standards are created by the Fitness Gram Advisory Board and Fitness Gram uses a criterion based standards. They're carefully established and they're based on age and gender. So they adjust with age. They adjust with all those things. This is actually kind of a cool fact. So Fitness Gram was created and it was beta tested in 1986, and guess where it was beta tested at? Right here in Oklahoma. So it's coming back uh, to Oklahoma. Um, it was actually beta tested by Dr. Cooper, who actually graduated from uh, OU. So uh, it's a little, a little bit of a coming back to Oklahoma here. So a little more information about Fitness Gram. There are five components of Fitness Gram. We have aerobic capacity, muscle strength, muscle endurance, body composition, and flexibility. And we chose specific assessments to mandate with this, um, but there are lots of different assessments that you can actually use. And I want to go over each one. Um, so if you don't know what aerobic capacity is, it's just the ability to perform large muscle movements, high intense exercises for, long, for prolonged periods of time. We selected, there's three different assessments that you can use for this. One is the pacer which is, you might know as a shuttle run, back and forth. Um, we also have the one mile run and a walking test. We chose the pacer because <clears throat> it's a measurement tool, um, it takes the least amount of space, and it works with a slow progression. It also builds students' confidence because the first time they do their assessment for like a pretest, you can get one or two. But the next assessment, you might be able to get 10 or 11. So they have that confidence building. They can get more. They can get greater score. For muscle strength, there's a few tests that are available. Modified pull-ups, 90-degree push-ups, um, flex hang, curl-ups, and a trunk lift. We've selected the push-ups, curl-ups, and trunk lift. We did this because it takes the least amount of equipment, and it's easier done with a wide group or a large group of children. And especially now, we always have large groups, especially in our PE classes. It's easier to implement. We also have muscle endurance. Um, again, there's a difference between muscle strength and muscle endurance. Muscle strength, of course, is the exertion of force. Uh, the max exertion of force and the uh, endurance is, of course, the exertion of force over time in a repeated fashion. Flexibility, um, that's just the range of motion through one joint. We use the back saver sit and reach. I'm sure you've seen those sit and reach devices where you put your feet on the end and you lean forward and you see how far you can go. Have you? Yeah? Good. I'm glad you're awake. <laughs> we use this one over the uh, uh, shoulders, shoulder range of motion. 
Um, again, we use this. We use this just because it's a. Uh, we have the capabilities of giving that equipment. Again, all these assessments are provided equipment for free as well. Um, the last but not least, body composition. There's three different body composition ones, and we chose BMI. It's the most widely used. It's just height and weight. It's the easiest to use. I know there's a little controversy with BMI, but it is best for the general public. Um, that's why we also, when we do our trainings, uh, we also um, talk about how we should talk to our children about BMI as well. So you're probably thinking, how did I get this? Well, we wrote a grant for it. Um, we wrote a grant through the Tobacco Settlement Endowment Trust. It was an unsolicited grant. We also wrote a grant through Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma. They provide our communications, our facilities, our training sites. Um, this is a five-year grant. We've been going for a little bit on that. This, also, this uh, funding also, co also covers equipment as well as a licensing for this. So what I'm saying is it's free. It's a free program. That means you get free equipment. You get the software for free. You get renewals for the licensing for free. And the trainings are free. The only thing you have to pay for is driving to trainings. And our trainings are regional, which means you don't really have to drive too far. We do have a few pieces of equipment. Look at there. We have a stadiometer, which of course gets that perfect height. We have a scale. We want to make sure that weight is perfect. We've got a yardstick. You're probably like, yardstick? What's that for? Well, the uh, assessment, the trunk lift, uses a yardstick, and it's going to be the best use for that. A painter's tape. Are we? Are we painting? No, we're not painting. Um, but this is actually really good to use for a lot of different assessments, like the pacer test, marking the, uh, where you start and where you end. You can use it for the curl up test, for the front of the fingertips and the back of the fingertips. You can also use this for the trunk lift, having a place marker so that your child doesn't bring their chin up. They actually have a correct form when they do all those things. Back saver sit and reach, just like I was saying, big old box. There is assembly required, just letting you know. And the meter wheel. We want to make sure if we're doing the pacer test, we have the 20 or the 15 meter, whichever one you choose for your facility, that it is accurate. Again, this helps us with uh, data management over time. It means everyone's doing the same, uh, doing their assessments the same way. And last but not least, we have the FitnessGram manual. And FitnessGram trainers, of course, are included. So like I said earlier, it's free. Um, no strings attached. We do have an MOU signed. That's just so we get the data inputted into the system. Uh, we like to have a personal contact form, and that's just if anything goes wrong with uh, inputting data, we have someone to call. So if you're the one who's the contact person, I might give you a call or send you an email saying, hey, what's going on here? Is your system working just fine? That's why we do those kind of things. Um, so this is my email, so make sure you write it down now because I forgot to put it at the end. Bill C at health.ok. Gov. You can also call me. Yes, I'm putting my phone number out there. 405-271-1000. Uh, and again, ask for Bill Cash. So I can check if your school is eligible. All you have to do to become eligible is have grades third through eighth. So if you have a K through third, you qualify. If you have an eighth through twelfth, you qualify. If you're anywhere in between, you qualify. The reason we did this is because we have great YRBS data, which is youth data, which is before um, third, and we have great BRFIS data, which is good for high school. So this is going to help us with that middle data, kind of seeing how your schools are doing and how we can help you all out. So let's say Edmond Public Schools is doing some great stuff. We can go to your district person, your district PE director, and say, hey, what's going on here? You guys are doing amazing stuff here. We want to make sure we know what's going on so we can help other districts out. And that's the, the, real, the real thinking behind this is how can we help all of our districts out in the best way possible, specifically in our PE programs. So if you look, this was our first year of the program. You can see our coverage was a little bit low. Again, I'm the only one marketing here, so <laughs> give me a break. Uh, but if you look a little bit after that, we look like we picked up a Panhandles schools a little bit more. We do do trainings. We did uh, trainings in Woodward, uh, down in the uh, 
Lawton area, we will, of course do Okemo City, we do the Tulsa Okemogi area, you can see we have a little more Okemogi schools, and then a few others in, this, in these other areas here. We make sure we cover all quadrants when we do our trainings. We do have over 281 schools who are already in the program. That means they filled out an MOU, they've gone through training. We have about 49,000 pieces of individual student data right now, which is really awesome. Um, it's good for districts to be able to report um, to different organizations, but it's also good for them to show kind of what's going on and how um, their program is being affected by the program or how their programming, like your PE teacher's programming, is actually changing um, and, or influencing your students. We do require actually pre and post assessments as well. So you're probably like, statewide fitness gram, that sounds scary. Well, it's not. It's all internet based, <clears throat> which means if you have a secure network at home, you can go home and you can input this data. I know a lot of times we have software on our computers at school that kind of anchor us to school. Even after hours, we have to sit there putting in data, putting in grades. This lets us be able to be a little bit more mobile. This also means we can, if we have a tablet at our school, we can pull our tablet out, has our students on there already, and then we just put in the scores immediately and they're automatically uploaded. Um, there's no installation necessary, so guess what? We don't have to talk to the IT about installing anything. It's already done. It's accessible through a unique URL. IT entry is only needed for student roster. So that means if you log on to your URL or your username, you'll only see your students in there, which means that if your student roster changes, your IT person will just have an automatic updating they'll do. Um, I could say with Tulsa Public Schools, they have theirs update weekly, so their student roster is updated weekly. Other school districts don't need to do that as much. They do it maybe twice a semester, um, and that's plenty. Um, so that's really up to your IT person, and we can actually um, navigate that when the time comes. The IT person will also not need to maintain an, uh, a server environment, which guess what? That's less work they gotta do, that's better for you. Um, and students can move from one fitness gram school to another fitness gram school and their data comes with them. Now this is really, really interesting. Um, so if I'm gonna use Tulsa again. So you have a Tulsa school and they go to, I don't know, a Cimarron school. And they're both fitness gram schools. Let's say this Tulsa school has already done their assessment. That means if they go to a Cimarron school and they're testing all their kids, they'll be, they can look on the system and say, oh, there's, there's scores already in here. That means there's one less child we have to assess. This is also really neat because when reporting, if your student stays in a fitness gram school throughout their entire career, you can actually see that longevity data. You can see how they've changed over time. This is really nice for parents to see or even PE teachers to see how they're developing. So I, I found this on the uh, fitness gram website and I really, really liked what it was saying. It said process first product. If we do the process, the product will follow. So if we do physical activity, physical fitness will follow. It really shows how PE is so important for our students. I'm sure you all know this, brain breaks and such. Um, but it's very important to have that overall fitness, physical fitness change in Oklahoma. So there are some additional modules. I just wanna make sure you know about these things. There's something called an activity log. It allows students to track their daily activity in steps uh, or minutes. So this is accessible through a student portal or through a parent portal, which is really nice. Um, it can help PE teachers set goals or use um, challenges or set challenges for kids so they can actually reach those goals and feel confident in themselves to be more active. You can also use this for reporting as well. So this is activity gram. It is a three day recall, activity recall that is. Two of those days will be school days and one of those days will be a non-school day. And again, it goes in kind of 30 minute chunks of physical activity time or even sedentary time. And they use the, the FIT principle which is frequency, intensity, type, and time. And again, this can also be used for reporting as well as group level reporting. So activity gram line, this is used for um, activity time spent or sedentary time spent in or out of school. 
It actually uses a questionnaire and a recall for this. So it's a seven day recall and it uses 15 question survey. And again, just like most of these, there's a report involved. If you want to run a report with it, you can. So I really like how they've set up these reports. Since Fitnessgram started, a lot has changed. It's become much more user friendly. Um, so there is tons of reports. I won't go over each one of those today, of course. Um, there's individual reports, there's group reports, there's student reports, there's parent reports. Um, if you see here, this is a student report. It describes what the report is and also says when to use it, which is really nice. So you don't really have to think much about it. It can also be produced with a CVS, Excel, or PDF, which is really nice as well. This is one of the best resources though. And this is something that if your school has this, I would definitely connect with your PE teacher. Because there are over 60 content resources in this library. This was, this was 60 whenever I checked about a year ago. So there's probably more, they add more constantly. And so these vary from a lot of different things. So let's say you have your CD with your cadence on it for your assessment and it breaks. And so instead of calling me and going, Bill, send me another CD. You have them right here. You can, you can assess immediately. Or you can burn on a new CD. If you lose your book, hey, it happens to everyone. The book is here. You can download it. There's also brain breaks on here. So if you want to get your classes active and your school has Fitnessgram, reach out to your PE teacher. Say, hey, I heard you had Fitnessgram. I heard you have a brain breaks on here. That would be really great to get my kids active get the blood moving up in that brain of theirs so we can, we can learn more. There's also Fitnessgram 101. Uh, my mother was a teacher for 20 years. Uh, she retired not too long ago. And I remember during those summer months, she unplugged from school. And so she came back, and you got to replug, right? Um, so if you got trained for Fitnessgram, and it's been a year since you've used it, you might forget some stuff. So there's also Fitnessgram 101. You can watch the video and kind of rehash everything that we went over in our trainings. So like I said, we do, do, we do regional trainings. We make sure we cover all regional areas. We have Tulsa, we have Oklahoma City, we have Durant, Lawton, Woodward, Okamogee. And all these are available to come and test out. So if you're not sure if you want to do Fitnessgram, come to the training. They're free. Make sure you sign up, send me an email. I'll send you a, a little event for that. It's only a half day training. Um, we cover uh, it is the physical best and the software side of things. And we've had a lot of schools do this. They're like, I don't know if I want to do this, but I'm interested. So all they have to, there's two things required again, is to come to training and get that paperwork in. So if you come to training, all you got to do is get the paperwork. And then I will mail you your equipment to your school, or, I'm, or if you're close, I'll hand deliver it. Um, you can see my, my, my shining face smiling that you, you signed on. Um, or you're like, no, just send it in there. Just send it in the mail, I'm good. Uh, but make sure if you're interested, have someone come. Um, these again are all in the fall. We shortened our trainings. We used to have them two times a year, um, but now we're just doing them uh, once a year in the regions. So again, if you need some extra resources or you need to have more understanding of what Fitnessgram is, if you go to the State Health Department's website, and you select wellness. Are you going to wellness right now? Are you selecting it? Okay, go to Fitnessgram now. Keep going. There, there it is. Click it. And that will have all the information for Fitnessgram. We've made brochures. We've made parent cover letters. We have permission forms um, so that you can have passive or active permission forms. If you're Oklahoma City, I know active is required. There's lots of information there. There's also a kind of a an email, you just have to click that and it'll send me an email to me directly and I can answer any of the questions you have. So one more time, you can contact me at 405-271-3619. And again, my name is Bill Cash and you can contact me at at health.ok.gov. Thank you all so much. <laughs>